I look forward to speaking at the Live Talks Business Forum on February 2nd. The premise of my book, Grow, is that businesses that are driven by a higher ideal way outperform their competition and deliver uh, great returns to shareholders. In fact, I found over 10 years, 400% better than the S&P 500. And the important point is that an ideal is not corporate social responsibility. It's not altruism. It's the reason a business exists. It's the impact you're trying to make in the world. It's the core essence of the brand and the business. Brands that understand that and leaders who understand that drive amazing growth. And the book is stories about leaders and, and brands and companies who've had extraordinary growth. I've always been curious in my career about brands and businesses that have grown really fast. When I was at Procter & Gamble for 25 years, I really studied those brands that had grown much, much faster than other P&G brands and, other, and other, other competitor brands. So what I did when I left P&G, I fielded a study to learn more about growth and to see if I could find patterns and trends of brands and businesses that have grown really well. So I partnered with one of the best research firms in the world, Miller Brown Optimer. I also brought in some graduate students and faculty at UCLA Anderson. And we looked at a database of 50,000 businesses over 10 years and cut the data for growth in financial wealth creation and also in customer loyalty. And then we tore apart the top brands that came out of that study. I drew the line at 50, we analyzed all 50, and we looked for patterns and trends and stories. And that's what the book is about. It's about a framework that I deduced from those 50 brands and then I tell stories to bring the framework to life. Two of my favorite stories in this book are the Discovery Communications Company and Pampers. These are two brands that made my top 50 list. Both brands have grown phenomenally well over the last 10 years. The reason I love these two brands and these two stories is that Discovery has been about satisfying curiosity since its founding over 30 years ago. Everything in that company is about satisfying curiosity. They recruit people for that, they put in everyone's work plan every year. What will you do this year to help satisfy curiosity? And their results, their culture is just amazing. So it's one of my favorite stories and I develop that in quite detail in my book. The second favorite story I have in the book is the Pampers brand, which is a brand that's very personal for me. It's a Procter & Gamble brand. It's the last brand I worked on before I became global marketing officer. It was a business in terrible trouble. We had no ideal. But we discovered this ideal of standing for baby development. We changed our products, we changed our culture, we changed our communication, and the brand tripled in size and quintupled in profits because it was driven by this higher ideal and this, this kind of uh, feeling that we want to make an impact with mothers and babies much better than anyone else in the category. I learned in my book research from the companies that I studied and also from reflecting on my own career that there were common act activities that these companies did and I call them in my book the five must do's and here's what they are in, in, in brief. First one is you must discover your ideal and articulate it and it should be in a very high place. It should, it should have a strong human value under it. So first of all you have to articulate it, make it explicit. Then you have to build the culture around the ideal. And culture is not a soft thing, it's a very hard thing. It's the rituals you do, the processes you do, the systems you have. They all have to emanate from and strengthen the ideal. The third must do is your communication inside the company, also outside the company, must come from the ideal, must strengthen the ideal, and must be coherent. It's crazy when companies that communicate in one way inside the company and another way outside the company. It's not authentic. So the fourth must do is about bringing the experience of your business to life with your customers. And that's all about your innovation process. This must again come from the ideal and it must strengthen the ideal. And there's probably nothing better in industry today as an example of that than the Apple stores. You know, Apple's been written about a lot, of course, but the stores are a remarkable phenomenon and they came right out of an ideal of helping people 
bring technology into their own lives in a, in a way that helps them express themselves you know, with much more confidence and clarity. Then the fifth must do is evaluation, measurement. If you don't measure the ideal, it won't stick. So you have to measure the ideal in your business and you have to measure progress against the ideal with your people. I found in my business research that these great businesses, these great brands that had grown phenomenally well were actually run by people who resembled more creative artists than business operators. And you could take many examples here. You could look at uh, the Red Bull leader, you know, Mataschitz, who's amazing. You look at Howard Schultz. You know, obviously, you look at Steve Jobs. But there are many, many other, um, you know, Ernst Tanner at Lindt, the, the, the great chocolate company in Zurich. These people understand the creative process. They understand that you have to bring your whole person to work. You have to, you have to you know, encourage your employees to bring their whole person to work. So these brands were run by people who were whole-brained, as Daniel Pink says, and they do different work, right? Yeah, of course they have to meet the short-term goals the business has, but they are thinking long-term. They're thinking about the customer experience. They're thinking about innovation. They're thinking about creativity. They're thinking about disruption and differentiation. The issue we have in business today is too often we don't bring our whole brain to work and we actually train our leaders to not bring their whole brain to work. So I think what's getting in the way of more businesses operating this way is leadership. We need to be training and, and, and bringing, bringing to life leaders of the future who are whole brained, who are caring, who are generous, who believe in service. And that's one reason I teach. I found the principles in my book apply to startup companies, new companies, as well as very, very old companies. And actually, if you look at the list of 50 brands that I studied that are all very high growth brands, some of them are 200 years old, like Louis Vuitton, and some are 13 years old, like Method, the home cleaning brand. The principles apply to public companies, private companies, small companies, big companies. In fact, when I started this book three years ago, Seth Godin, a famous author, said to me, Jim, I love your ideas, but this won't work in big companies. It's only for small companies. And I wanted to learn about that. And actually what I found is it may be a bit harder in a large public company to implement this framework, but if you do, the returns, the payout is enormous. So this framework I offer in the book, it's right for everyone, business to business, business to consumer, private, public, it simply works.